Assalamu alaikum. Welcome ladies to the Wellness KE channel. My name is Fatma. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Here on the Wellness KE channel, we like to offer women great information and solutions. That way they can be able to improve their reproductive health naturally. Welcome to part two of our conversation. We have been sharing effective tips to help you maximize the health benefits of your Ramadan fast. That way you can be able to improve your uterine health and your hormone health. And today we are all about nutrition. So are you ready? Let's get to it. So before we get started, as always, I want to remind you to hit that like button and subscribe button. That way you'll know every single time we post a new video. So today we want to discuss exactly what is healthy for you to eat when you're breaking your fast or when you're going into your fast. And in order for you to understand everything, I want you to understand one particular hormone known as insulin. Basically, during the holy month of Ramadan, when you're going through your dry fast, you become insulin sensitive. This is a very positive thing for you if you struggle with fibroids, PCOS, endometriosis, fertility issues, or even menstrual issues. Why? Because insulin is a hormone that is known as an anabolic hormone. That means it keeps building and it makes things grow. So normally, when you struggle with all these reproductive issues, you do have cells in your body that are inflamed, that are sick or unhealthy cells. Basically, your Ramadan dry fast is going to ensure that it regulates insulin so that this anabolic hormone does not make these cells keep on multiplying and growing. This is going to ensure that you heal completely and you also get to improve your health. But what are some of the foods that are going to help you in healing completely as you go through your Ramadan fast? So in order for you to understand the foods that are going to be able to be beneficial during the month of Ramadan, I want you to remember these three food groups. The first one is protein. So did you know that your body actually needs protein every single day? It is something that you need to put into your body in order for you to have the building blocks to build your body. That's why if you can remember in school, protein was known as the bodybuilding food. Basically, you need to eat protein as you break your fast because it's going to help you in rebuilding the cells so that you can be able to become healthy. As we mentioned in our previous video, during your dry fast, you go through something known as a hypertronic autophagy. So meaning you actually get to destroy all these cells completely that are inflamed, that are sick or unhealthy, and you need to build them up in a healthy way. That way you can actually go through a renewal. And protein is a food group that's going to help you big time. But if we're talking about fibroids, cysts, and also endometriosis and fertility struggles, then I'm sure you've noticed that there are certain foods in the protein group that may be highly inflammatory or might actually make your condition much worse. So what exactly should you eat as you're breaking your fast if you're struggling with these issues or want to just balance your hormones and maximize the benefits? Well, in the protein category, number one is you should eat the lean type of protein like chicken. For instance, you can actually have grilled chicken breast with a salad and some healthy sources of carbohydrates and healthy fats like an avocado. This is just a basic example because protein that is healthy for you will help you in building the blocks and avoid inflammatory issues and also avoid spiking your insulin levels. Remember we mentioned that during this time that you're breaking your fast, this is actually the time where your insulin levels are behaving well. But then you don't actually want to overeat and overload up on protein that is unhealthy for you because you will spike insulin and blood sugar. And this will worsen all your uterine issues. So as you're selecting foods from the protein group, keep in mind foods like dairy, like milk and sometimes yogurt or cheese for other people, can actually be highly inflammatory. So what you can do is to replace them with plant sources of protein or plant sources of milk, like coconut milk is also going to be good, sesame milk, uh, sunflower seed milk, these will actually be healthier for you. And they're also sources of protein. So maybe for instance, if you're having a smoothie, you can actually have a plant, 
uh, based type of milk you can make it yourself and we have a video here on the wellness ke channel showing you how you can be able to prepare sesame seed milk and you can find it right here so when it comes to protein also keep in mind the portion as we mentioned it is very important for you to have the right portion of protein as you're breaking your fast and with portions we're talking about the size of your palm so if you're going to have fish if you're going to have chicken or if you're going to have plant sources of protein like lentils make sure that you keep that in mind the second food group to consider is fiber. Fiber is very important because it is considered the broom as the broom that comes in and sweeps away all the toxins, all the junk from your gut. Fiber is also important for hormonal balance, especially insulin balance. And this is very important if we want to maximize the benefits of our fast and we also want to heal our womb effectively. So when we're talking about fiber, we're talking about lots of vegetables and fruit. So if you can add star fried vegetables, mixed vegetables, steamed vegetables, greens like spinach, managu, terere, or you can add uh, broccoli, cauliflower, all these are highly rich in fiber. I'm sure you know that dates are also rich in fiber. And just be mindful of the portion or the sizes that you have. About two to three dates are still okay as you break your fast because they'll boost your energy, add some iron, balance your blood sugar, and also add the fiber that you need. The third food group that I'm going to mention, or rather it's not necessarily a food group, but it's something that we need to consider, is hydration. So hydration is really important because when you're doing a dry fast during the month of Ramadan, you're not taking any liquids. So because of that, you're actually going to feel very thirsty and you might be tempted to drink too much water, especially as you're heading for Taraweh prayers. So what I'll advise you, the key thing to do is to space this out. As you break your fast, of course, you're going to have a glass of water with dates. Then you'll have your meal. Then you can have another glass of water. Then space this out. Have another glass after an hour or so. Because already when you are going through a, your dry fast, your body is very smart enough. It notices that there's going to be an imbalance of things like sodium, potassium, and all these electrolytes. And so you might be tempted to add electrolytes into your body, but this is not the right time because your body naturally knows how it's going to perform and how it's going to balance that in your system. So all you need to do is to drink enough water, but the key is to space it out better. So for instance, by the time you get to Taraweh prayers, you'll have already had about three glasses of water. Once you're back, you can have two more glasses, one glass after Taraweh, and then give yourself another hour and have another glass. In total, you'll have had about four to five glasses of water. And then during Suhoor time, you can have two. You'll have one glass before you have your meal and then another glass after you have your Suhoor. This is the time for you to eat fiber. This is the time for you to add protein. This is the time for you to also add something like a smoothie that's going to be hydrating and will allow you to actually feel quenched all throughout the day. So these tips are going to help you in going through your Ramadan fast and trying your best to eat the healthy foods. I want to remind you that we have our 30 day Ramadan nutrition plan to help you if you really want to go deeper into understanding how you can maximize the benefits of your Ramadan fast. As we mentioned, this is the time for you to rebuild healthy cells so that you can be able to heal your body completely. If you have fibroids, cysts, endometriosis, adenomyosis, you struggle with infertility or have hormonal imbalance, I want to urge you to start taking your Ramadan fast also as a form of healing for your body. This is the best time for you to see the best results. As always, ladies, if you found this video helpful, make sure that you let us know in the comment section below and also share with us what other videos you'd like to get from us. Thank you so much to all of you who have been subscribing to the Wellness KE channel and to my fellow Muslims, brothers and sisters, I want to wish you a Ramadan Karim. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So I want to remind you, this is part two of our conversation. If you have not been able to see part one of our conversation on ways to maximize your health benefits of your Ramadan fast, please make sure that you click the link right here for you to watch that full video. Thank you.